Hi, it's Paul here at Dapper Rocks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an automation clip um, that you can put into the playlist here uh, to control knobs and sliders whilst a track is playing. There are two ways you can do it. You can make a recording of yourself moving the knobs or sliders as the track is playing. So a simple recording and the uh, software will move the the, the controls in the way that uh, it saw you do whilst you were uh, manually moving them. And the second way is to create uh, a kind of graph of the uh, levels that you want on the knob or slider. So I'll show you what I mean and it will make more sense. So you can see here I've got a, um, a piano track that I've been working on. It's very rough. Um, it's not a masterpiece by any means. I'll just play you a few seconds of it. So I'll stop that playing. So, well, first of all, let me open the wrapper in the grand piano. Um, what we'll do for the purpose of this demonstration is I'll move this volume slider up and down and record it so that it uh, so that it does the same thing automatically when the track is playing. So, first of all, what I do is I come up here to this control here. If you look over onto the left side at the top there, you've got the the uh, the help box, the tips and it's telling you that this is called the multi-link to controllers. If I click on it and you continue to look at that box at the top left corner, it says, please tweak the controls you want to link to. So that's obviously to tell the software what it, wa what it is that you want recorded. So I'm just gonna move this slider here, this volume slider. You know, you've only got to move it a fraction just so that the software recognizes what, what it is you want to record. And then I come back up to this control, this multi-link to controllers. I right click on it this time. And you can see at the top it says one parameter selected for automation. And then if I come down in the same box a little bit, it says create automation clips. So I click on that, left click on that. And there is my automation click where the recording will go. Now, for, <coughs> for the sake of tidiness, and bearing in mind you could end up with lots of these automation clips and lots of um, instruments in your playlist we need to put this in a sensible place which will be underneath the track that it's going to be controlling so at the moment we've got uh, a playlist track there called piano if I right click on that I can come down and I get this option here to insert one So I click on that and it puts in a blank uh, track for me the next thing I want to do if I right click on that track six where I've created the blank one and come down again in this box I get this option to group with the above track so track six where I'm going to put this grand piano um, automation clip I'll just pull it down is now grouped to my grand piano and with this little triangular icon here I can hide it if I want to or unhide it hide unhide uh, just to keep it tidy once the automation has been completed. So next thing I need to do, if I come back to my grand piano button here in the channel rack, click on that and bring the wrapper out again so I can see this volume control that I'm going to be moving. And now I need to uh, begin the recording. So if I come to the top of the screen where this red dot is and I click on it, it turns red. It says, what would you like to record? I say notes and automation with that third button down and it's ready to record so I'm going to start playing and as I do I'm going to manually move this volume control up and down so I'm moving it now for maximum effect I'll stop the recording now uh, now obviously I, I didn't uh, move that slider in any particular way I was just de you know creating a demonstration so now if I play the music um, if, and you watch this volume slider now you'll say oh first of all I must come to the top here and stop the recording with this red button so I've stopped the recording now I play it and you, you'll be able to see this volume control 
uh, automatically moving up and down according to the recording that I made. So that's it, it's just exactly copied what I did and now I've got an automation clip in there. Um, if I want to get rid of that, or uh, if I want to reset it, one way I can do that is I can come to the uh, browser on the left hand side, I come to um, current projects, um, and then down to patterns, and then to grand piano, and then grand piano master level, and you can see the pattern that was made as I move that slider up and down. Um, to just to even it out again and get rid of that uh, volume control that I created. If I hold the, uh, I take my paintbrush, I move it over to the right hand side of the screen and I hold the shift key down which will create a straight line, a level straight line and pull it across and that pattern's now gone. So if I get rid of that box, close it away and I start playing again you'll see that the volume slider no longer moves up and down. You did see it move slightly at the very beginning because it just moved to that de default level that I created with the paintbrush. Um, <clears throat> another alternative, if you want to get rid of it of course, is you can just right click on this um, clip here and make it disappear. Similarly with the button in the channel rack, you can make that disappear and then recreate them but it's just not a very uh, efficient way of doing things. So. That is how to create an automation, the, the kind of quick and easy way, but not necessarily the most if, um, accurate way. The, the more accurate way, the way you would probably do it if, if you wanted to, to use that volume control on a piano piece, is um, you would um, first of all make this bigger so we can see what we're doing. So if I hold the Alt key down and move the wheel on the mouse, it gets taller and if I hold the control key down and move the wheel it gets wider so now I can really see what I'm doing and this line going across here now is just like a default level for the volume um, and you can still see the notes here in the grand piano track so let's say this, this first note here let's say I want that to be louder than the, than the rest I'll put a couple of points in on this line and a couple of points at the end of that note and then I'll just pull them up, the, the inner two points, to make it louder than the, the rest of the uh, piece. Um, if I was uh, wanting to create some effect where you get a linear reduction as the note gets played, I could pull down on this end, or, or um, if I want a curved if, um, effect, I can take this point in the middle here and pull down on that. Okay, so. It takes a little bit of practice to know how best to use it for what you're doing. But anyway, I won't do that. I'll take that back up there. I'll create, there's a big chord here. I'll put four points in either side of that, two there, two that, two that side, two the other side. And I'm going to pull this one down so this one won't be so loud. I'll put a couple of points in here where these notes are in the track. And I will take it up there on one side and down the other I'll do that and uh, I'll make this chord here a bit louder than the rest and on this side I'll make it quieter Oops. okay so that's how you do it manually, so just to demonstrate it again, I'll open the wrapper for the grand piano. If you look at the volume control whilst I play, you'll see it moving up and down according to the graph that I've just created. There you are, that's done. <coughs> if you want to even out this line, I mean this could potentially be very long if, if you've got a long track in there and you don't want to be pulling points up and down to, to even it out, to, to cancel it. Again you could either you know, delete the whole thing by right clicking on the, um, on the pattern there in the playlist, but uh, an easier way is to come over into the channel rack where it says Grand Piano Main Master Level, left click on that and that brings out this controller 
and here on the right hand side you've got this wrench if you click on that and then go to scale levels they've all disappeared down to the bottom there for the moment but if I um, move that up well actually it's done it that time in one but sometimes it doesn't sometimes you've got to move this multiply slider there see sometimes you've got to move the multiply slider to get rid of all the um, the undulations in in the uh, level and then just move this center slider up and down to get what you want uh, for the default level and when that's done you just say accept and it stays like that and once again I can demonstrate if I click on the grand piano button that when I play this track this volume marker will move up to the default level that I just set but it won't move after that here we go so that's it that's really all I wanted to show you um, last thing I will mention if we look into the channel rack here uh, our button in the channel rack this is the button that uh, applies to this um, pattern that we've put here in in the uh, playlist for the automation uh, next to that there's this uh, icon here this symbol here that tells us that it's not like the other um, instruments in the channel rack it tells us that this is an automation and it's not something you can attach to the mixer as you can with these other instruments okay so in this video I hopefully have demonstrated the two ways you can create an automation for buttons uh, sorry knobs or sliders um, in FL Studio and um, you know hopefully that that will have been helpful to you and uh, if it has please subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching and good luck with your music